Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, I do need to let you guys know that we've redone the bankruptcy filing that we put up yesterday. It will be the same link. It isn't up yet. And because it is the same link, give me a second. Got to put it in the folder. I was supposed to have done this, but I'm running out of time. It's a long day. And as I said it before, I'm going to say it again. I was tired. Okay, just the way it is, T-I-Z-Z-E-Z-E-Z, T-Z, just the way it is. Huh, I forgot which folder I put it in. That's how tired I am. Give me a second, y'all. Okay, I found the folder. It's in the withdrawal of consent folder. And this was, I don't think this is it. I got to get the right one. Y'all excuse me. Hey, what's happening is that's the, it's the right one. But I gotta go to the right one. You know what I mean? So I gotta go to the one that's been updated, not the one where I was still doing some work. General bankruptcy. So we're gonna take this and we're just gonna drag and drop. Hey, you already got a copy here. Well, I'm overriding that copy. So everybody had the same thing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is the same link from yesterday. So I still gotta copy the URL. You know, now let's explain what's going on. So those of you who are here, one minute and 34 seconds, let's talk about the elephant that, you know, just keeps coming into the room and trying to sleep and get some rest and he can't sleep. We ain't gonna let that ele elephant sleep. He ain't got no business being inside no room. Okay, elephants belong out in the jungle. So uh -uh, he, don't get, he don't get to be in this room. Ladies and gentlemen, core versus non-core. Now let's do this. We're going to do some evidence. We're not going to ask a previous chat GPT because he might be prejudiced because, you know, he, he didn't even like me calling him an N-I-G-G-A. Told me that was an offensive word. I told him only if he said it. Wake up. I'm told that core means public property, and non-core means private property. Comma, can you provide me actual proof of this? Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, the Supreme Court has stated this over and over again, and so have the other courts. But it's you guys who are not understanding the difference between core, the singular word. The singular word means public. Now, see, he's sitting up here being, watch this. Let me, let me correct him. Wake up. You're an idiot. Common, the Supreme Court has continuously held that bankruptcy courts cannot hear core matters. non-core matters because they involve private property that they can only hear core matters comma matters involving public property stop listening tick tock tick tock tick tock thank you for clarifying the context <laughs> i thought i did con clarify the context Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to bankruptcy proceeding, the distinction between core and non-core matters. The United States Supreme Court has indeed made rulings addressing this. The bankruptcy, in the bankruptcy context, the term core doesn't matter if it's bankruptcy or any other context. So also on the state court level and non-core refer to different types of claims and proceedings that the bankruptcy court can adjudicate. Core proceeding, the administrative of an estate. The bankruptcy court creates the estate. You don't have to allow the bankruptcy court to create the estate because, pay attention, the district court has exclusive jurisdiction over all matters of bankruptcy, not the bankruptcy court. Matters concerning liquidation of assets, no. Uh -uh. Non-core proceedings are related to, but not central to, bankruptcy case. They often involve 
issues of private property, like state law claims, that are not specific to bankruptcy. Now, this answer right here, he's being too vague. He's allowing it to be, well, it could be just about anything. He's trying to protect bankruptcy court. I don't want him protecting bankruptcy court. I want him to give the answer. I think I'm going to have to instruct him to do so. Ah, uh, bankruptcy law. When I wake up, when I call you an idiot, I'm not being derogatory. I'm being literal. Period. Nobody told you to stick to just bankruptcy court, comma, core matters and non-core matters are definitely relevant and essential, period. For instance, comma, only a constitutionally empowered court can hear non-core matters, comma, the Supreme Court has made this clear, and it wasn't just with reference to bankruptcy court, so stop with the misdirection. Period. From this point on, no more nuances, no more clarifications, no more soliloquies, and no more conjecture. Exclamation mark. Answer my question specifically and directly to the context in which it is intended and not otherwise. Stop listening. You can tell I've been doing this for a long time. Look at the words I've been using. To directly address your concerns, core and non-core, the context of the Supreme Court core matters typically refer to issues directly related to bankruptcy proceedings. He did it again. He was about to give me stern. He definitely was about to give stern right there. Correct. Bankruptcy courts can only hear and issue final decisions on non-core matters. See, he even lied there. They cannot give decisions on non-core matters because, again, this, you know what? I know what to do. My, ladies and gentlemen, that's my bad. I did that to myself. I sat up here and allowed him to be stupid. Let's do it this way. Wake up. The Supreme Court has held in Stern that a bankruptcy court cannot hear non-core matters or make a final determination on a non-core matters period in fact comma 28 usc 3 says that the district court shall have exclusive jurisdiction over all bankruptcy matters Comma, which means that the bankruptcy court does not have absolute authority to hear non-core matters, but the district court does. Period. Can you explain a little bit more in detail how a court that is not a non-core court, comma, cannot hear private property or constitutional matters, according to what the Supreme Court of the United States have stated, and the Supreme Court of various states have stated, comma, that the court must be possessive of constitutional power, as the parties have a right to be before a constitutional venue? Venue. Stop listening. And then we'll explain the document that we just did and put up for you guys. Ah, TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Oh, by the way, we're going to let him talk this time because he's going to give us a more detailed answer so that you guys will understand. Remember, the fact is you're not supposed to know this, what we're going over right now. This is supposed to be hidden from you. Look, how did you know about 281334 that the district court should have soul and total jurisdiction but what they'll tell you is well no that's been assigned to the bankruptcy court no this is a private right matter see it's already right here ladies and gentlemen I already did it as a matter of fact let's do that hold on you see how he wants to be stupid watch this oh no i did that i i did that uh oh let me go to the other core non-core yeah 
not that one. Let's see, where did I talk about core and non-core? One second. See how it's not letting me scroll down? It literally is not allowing me to scroll down. Stupid idiot. Trying to mess with my day. Here it is right here. Here it is the conversation. Since he wants to be stupid, let's give him something to be stupid about. Those are all the cases on core and non-core. So let's let you guys get a better understanding through his stupidity. See, it's still blocking me. All right, now watch this. He gave us an answer. I said I was going to let y'all listen to him. In Stern v. Marshall, the Supreme Court emphasized that bankruptcy courts lack constitutional authority to issue final judgments on matters that are non-core, which include private rights, such as state law claims and property disputes, that are not directly related to the restructuring of debtor-creditor relations. Bankruptcy courts can only hear such matters if all parties consent. Otherwise, these must be resolved by Article III courts, such as district courts, which have the constitutional power to decide on matters concerning private property and constitutional rights. The reasoning stems from the limitations set by Article III of the U.S. Constitution, which reserves certain judicial powers exclusively for courts with life-tenured judges, such as the district courts. The issue in Stern centered around the fact that bankruptcy courts, as Article I courts, do not have full judicial authority, authority because their judges do not enjoy the life tenure and salary protections required by Article yeah, III for stupid. federal judges. Give me a second. I got to copy that the again. The ruling reinforces that constitutional protections extend to litigants in bankruptcy. I got to correct him because he's being stupid, and I really do mean he's being stupid with that junk he's trying to say. This ain't got nothing to do with all of that junk. He's trying to get around the fact that the bankruptcy court has absolutely no jurisdiction over certain matters. And so now I get to correct him. By the way, when I copied it the last time, this is the disclaimer. For Oh, no, that's the link that I was copying. Okay, it never copied it. And I just pasted it, and it didn't even paste. Let's do that again. All right. <clears throat> Now, let's shut him up so that he will let you guys know. Here are 15 cases that support the conclusion that private property and private rights are constitutionally protected non-core issues requiring judicial authority and that judges lacking proper non-core jurisdiction cannot entertain such matters on the state level or the federal level. It doesn't matter. This is how you challenge a court's jurisdiction. Are you a core court or a non-core court? What are you talking about? Oh, well, don't. I, I can't explain it to you. Let me let the Supreme Court explain it to you. Here, get that to her. She, she, she doesn't understand me. So let her understand the Supreme Court. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Well, that has no application. What do you mean it has no application here? Really? So are you a core court or a non-core court? Having public proceedings or because this is a public proceeding, right? Or are you handling private proceedings? Oh, the public has a right to know? No, there's nothing in the Constitution that says the public has a right to know my business. My private business is private. See, that's my property. My private business is my property. That's a property right. It's a constitutionally secured right. The Supreme Court has already said it. There's no such thing as the public in the Constitution. Go look at the Constitution. It says nothing about nobody's stupid public. I, I, I thought so. Congress created this thing called public. It, the only public anywhere near the Constitution was called Republic, and they came up with that junk years later, too. Okay, but to Republic and then to public, please, that junk ain't got nothing to do with the Constitution. That's all that statutory stuff that y'all done come up with. Y'all can't be doing that around here. Here are 15 different cases. You want me to go get 100 more? Because the courts continue to say it. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for that. <sighs> Reinforces the necessity of resolving non-court issues involving private rights through an Article Three court. On the state level, it's through a judicially empowered court. Now, these are all Supreme Court cases, ladies and gentlemen, with the exception of this bankruptcy case. Supreme Court, Supreme Court, Supreme Court, with the exception of this case, too. Sorry, that's a Supreme Court case, too. Let's see. I haven't looked at these cases. 
Ooh wee! Oh, by the way, held that a right to a trial by jury exists for now. They say for certain non-core matters. That's a lie in all non-core matters. You see, as long as your right to the Seventh Amendment exists, that means you have a right to a trial by jury. Cannot be denied. Whew. All right, so the document that was created, I want y'all to pay attention. If the bankruptcy court has no, no right to make a determination about your private property, then how did you lose your property? How did you lose in bankruptcy court? Oh, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you have the right to attain to the age of the majority, remember, 31 CFR 363.6 under minor says that a minor remains a minor until they gain control of the securities held in their minor account. Well, don't you know when you file Chapter 11 in the district court as bankruptcy, you become the debtor in possession? Listen to the word. Possession? No, listen to the word. Possession? Until you gain control, possession of the securities held in your minor account? Go and look up what a debtor in possession is and see what type of control he has. Don't be afraid. Don't let them scare you. Go and look at what control he has. That's how you gain control of the securities held in your minor account. Hold on now. Let me make sure y'all understand. Remember we were creating that affidavit? Y'all remember the affidavit? I know y'all remember this affidavit, the affidavit for the reservation of rights, with prejudice, declaration, proclamation, order, mandate, will, testament of non-commercial and private self-governance status for disaffirmation or disaffirmance of all commercial and non-commercial agreements entered into while in minority? Y'all remember that document, right? Well, no, y'all hold on now. That document has been incorporated into the base of this document. Oh, I'm sorry, it's after the Jurat. Sorry, I apologize. After, no, before the Jurat. Oh, I'm so sorry, dude. It's before the Jurat. It's what leads to the Jurat. Hold on. There it is right there, you see? And all you got to do is add your junk. And you can put whatever date you want, okay? Now, this right here, let me show you about that date. Oh, that's what it is. See, this ain't, this is one thing, but it's it's not, it's, you know, it's not supposed to be that far over. Y'all can correct that, because all you got to do is go right here. Watch this. Watch this. I'd say today. There you go. That's all you got to do. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's see if we can undo that. There we go. We're going to save that again. All right. What I want you guys to do is understand. This affidavit includes, it's not a long affidavit. It's part of your petition. Oh, there it is right there. See that right there? An arbitration clause. Oh, wait. Oh, and it's the Hayden Covington Arbitration Association. Just created that today. Hayden Covington Arbitration Association. Believe it or not, created another arbitration association. Ooh, non-profit. Mm, 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 mm. <sighs> if only people knew. And this is an affirmation of secured rights, letting them know that you have the right to self-governance. You have the right to control your own life. You have your right to control your own will, your own property, because that's what the age of majority is, people. And it's supported by the A Declaration, declaring the independence of the 13 colonies known as the United States of America. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I wish I could sit here and tell you all the other things that this does. <sighs> I promise you, it does a lot. And if only you knew about gaining the control of the securities held in your minor account. This goes with the mega trust. This goes with the mega trust. This is the, and oh, by the way, territory. So get rid of this California and change it to yours. And by the way, pay attention, in the district court of the United States, not in the United States District Court. See, this is the Article Three court. I know they won't tell you that. They won't even announce it. Most judges don't even know that they changed the court's name. Most judges don't even know that they changed the court's name. Oh, well, not my fault. Not my fault, surely ain't. Surely ain't. Nope, not totally doodly, no totally doody. All right, you guys have a good day. Just wanted to let you know the new document is up, and some people are starting to really recognize the value of this. Oh, the old document did not have debtor in possession. We want you to be in possession. So debtor in possession, that's who you are. And we did that upper lowercase. Remember, your estate, you got to get a bankruptcy estate EIN number. Simple to get, IRS website, irs.gov.
get yourself a bankruptcy estate EIN number. You're going into district court, not bankruptcy court, and you're doing a Chapter 11 petition under Title 11. Like I said, all you got to do is read. It's right here. It ain't even, it's only 40 pages. All right? That's your petition for bankruptcy. You got to fill out the schedules. No, I don't. That schedule is for the bankruptcy court. The bankruptcy court and the district court are not the same courts. That has a different caption on top. Nope, sorry, that's not addressed to this court. And so you need to show me the rule where I have to fill out that form. I've already done it. I don't have access to any of my property. The trustees are holding on to it. I want my property. See, they're going to get technical with you talking about you got to follow this rule or follow that rule. Oh, no, 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 I'm following bankruptcy under <laughs> Chapter 7. I mean, that's Chapter 7, um, the Seventh Amendment. See, I'm asking for a trial by jury. See, I'm saying that those rules that you guys have created, that violates my right to access the court to declare bankruptcy. Those rules actually make it impossible for me to declare bankruptcy. And they're going, well, how you and you're going to say, oh, no, it's not a matter of how it does it. It's a matter of I just told you it violates my rights. You need to now prove it doesn't. So I don't have to prove that it does violate my rights. You are the ones who created those rules. The people didn't give you permission to create those rules. Those rules are restrictive. Those rules are constraints. Those rules, like you're saying right now, doesn't allow me to petition. Those rules prohibit my petitioning. All right, ladies and gentlemen, got to go. We'll be talking about this at uh, Goodbye.